it's April 10th, 2024. I had a really beautiful morning of devotion until I came across something that I wanted to share about professing, professing Christians that I don't know are going to be raptured and that made me question even my own walk how we can speak the words but not really have a heart to really be doing the finishing work of Jesus Christ and it just came evolved today as I was watching a program today about the ten virgins the five wise and the five unwise and I went on to study a little bit more about it and I also have a link on this minister pastor douglas about the ten virgins in matthew 25 and i think it's important that we get to this because there are people who believe they're going to be raptured and they're not they're professing christians but they may not be raptured in the they may end up being left behind and that's the message that came across today and it really makes you examine yourself and we're supposed to examine ourselves daily and have a personal walk with Jesus so if you're one of those people that wonders if you're going to be a part of the rapture of the church you would want to maybe think twice about this and I'm going to read the parable and it says what does the ten virgins teach us and it says in the parable, the Savior taught us how to prepare for the second coming. And in the last days, the Lord said that to be faithful and pray always having your lamps trimmed and burning and oil with you. And that you may be ready for the coming of the bridegroom. And the thing is, is that I messaged somebody in my family and this, I hope this person hears me. You know the response I got, and it was very relevant. It was about the the we wrestle not with it's Ephesians six ten, and it was image. And she says I've been up since six o'clock this morning doing work. I'm a little busy right now. That was the comment that came back. That was the response I got. Now this is a professing Christian that. That, I mean, this is the reaction I got. Now, how do you think uh, you would feel if you got that response after sending a positive, Holy Spirit-filled message? And then, I, I'm, I'm just going to go there because this is family, and we're family here. And I send a positive message to another family member and I said the Lord delights in your faithfulness and loves your the diligence and prayer with your life your prayer life with your family and friends no response whatsoever and then I went on to say when we go to our heavenly home to be with Jesus there will be a library of all your prayers and books full of prayers along with your heavenly furnished home and I said we should fall in love with Jesus every day and his promises too and no response now I'm using this as an example about how the lack of response let me just tell you that that lack of response now any and the reason I say this that there was no lack of response. Early, shortly after that, they responded to a group text message showing that there was no need to respond to my text, but they could text back to a group text showing no interest in what I had to say. Okay, it's total ignorance is what I'm saying. And I hate to be so blunt, by saying this but if there are people that are going to be left behind it is out of ignorance 
and it's out of willful ignorance that they'll be left behind. Jesus said in his word that depart from me, I knew you not. The door will be slammed shut if we're not watching for the soon return for the Lord. Every day, every time we get a chance to, it says pray without ceasing. No matter what the scoffers and mockers say, it says in the word, I'm going to go with what the word says, not what the scoffers and mockers say, because scoffers and mockers are not the ones that wrote the word of God here. It says that to pray and watch daily for his return will come like a thief in the night, okay? Like I said, the link it will be in the description box if you want to further this study. The point is, do you want to be raptured or do you want to be left behind? That's the question you should ask yourself. As a professing Christian, these are professing Christians that ignorantly ignored that message. And I just wanted to say this. There are Christians that think they're going to be raptured and are willfully ignorant and don't have a personal walk with the Lord. And I can tell you that this is what I see happening. They're not watching for the signs. They're not looking at any of the, they, they don't go online looking at the signs of the same return of Jesus Christ. They don't talk about it. They think it's hocus pocus, most of it. They don't even, if, I mean, a lot of churches don't even talk about prophecy. A lot of the churches I go to don't even touch on these topics. You have to go on YouTube or you might have to go on Rumble or uh, TikTok to get some of the information that you get here. You don't get it sometimes at churches. I mean, there are churches that do it, don't get me wrong, but the churches around here, they don't touch prophecy, a lot of them. They won't go near it. I don't know why that is the way it is, but I'm just telling you, they don't get into the heavy-duty stuff. They don't want to go near the issues on Israel and Gaza, and it's mostly, and let me just, let me just, divide, rightly divide the issue. What's going on in Gaza is horrific. I don't know why Israel is in the situation that, I know why Israel went to war. I know that way. I understand. But it has gotten to the point where Gaza is a nightmare. So, do I believe that there's going to be a, a some kind of ceasefire the way things are going with the un they're going to push for that and it looks to me like something is going to happen in the near future but this is all prophecy and that's why we should follow what is happening in israel because israel is like the clock and jerusalem is the hour hand and the minute hand is literally inches away from what prophetically is going to happen in the Psalm 83 scenario. But as for the return of Jesus Christ, it could happen any moment. That's what the whole point of this conversation is about. And I wanted to take extra time because it's really about the rapture of the church. And the reason I am taking the extra time to explain it is because there's such a thing as the compromising church. There's such a thing as that, you know, when they talked about in Revelation, the compromising church, the, the, uh, I, I don't know it offhand. It, it's in Revelations 1, 2, and 3. But nonetheless, there are people that will compromise their beliefs so that they can just go along to get along. And they don't want to hear about all this rapture stuff. They think it's a, a lot of nonsense. But the soon return of Jesus Christ is in the word in Matthew 25 about the bridegroom. When the bridegroom comes, 
in the the five unwise are scrambling around getting their garments ready and everything and they're not ready to go and they're not watching for the events taking place and the Lord carries the Lord closes the door and says I knew you not do you want to be one of those people that has the door slammed in your face and you have to stay for the seven year tribulation and on and on and on I mean think about that reality of being a Christian going through tribulation. So to the Christian church that's compromised and in this place where they are, they have the bright Bible, they have the stickers, they have everything, all they, all the Christian needs that you can possibly be, but they don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. The relationship with Jesus Christ is that you got to know the time you live in at the soon return of Jesus Christ. If you don't get that, if you don't know, then you got to know that we're in the time and season of his soon return. At any moment, he could come and we could be caught away according to 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. It's so imperative we get this message again. I'm going to link that sermon by Pastor Douglas about this very message. I think it's important you get it because this should give you some time to think about what we're up against. If we walk away from this conversation and didn't have this conversation with our fellow brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, and we are to walk ignorantly, willfully ignorantly, and go into the tribulation and knowing what we know this isn't about just sinners saved by grace alone this is about Christians going into the tribulation knowing what they know there are Christians that are compromised that will go into tribulation and won't be raptured and there are there is some truth to what Pastor Douglas is saying here you're going to want to watch this sermon, and I wouldn't pass it up. I'm just saying, it made me think and step back, and I said, oh my gosh, you know, have I gone wrong in some areas? It, it makes you think about what we need to do to prepare for the way of the, the Lord. He could come at any moment, he said. I come at a day in an, an hour and you think not in Jesus name we love Jesus we love his return we love his we love watching for his signs of his return or we wouldn't be doing this okay I said a lot I'm gonna leave it there God bless you and I hope you watch that program okay thank you for watching again